on that. I miss you, nigga. <laughs> I was talking to Bruce about that. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't think that was still it, man. I thought, I thought it was enough. <laughs> Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, mm-hmm. Instagram are all be jacking them up. Uh, Venmo is also be jacking them up. <laughs> and Cash App. Uh, that's B J A C K. Oh, man. Oh, man. I keep saying Bruce's face. <laughs> Dude, I can like hear your voice when you said it. be jacking them up and down. <laughs> oh, oh, sure. oh man. Uh, okay, I'm so leaving, I'm leaving out the van, bro. Oh, wow. All right. Yeah, yeah. Right. All right, here we go. You might need to change that. <laughs> Dude, I love it because <laughs> Lord, it used to be B Jack off. But, be jacking off. But no, that was Brandon Jackson's office, though. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it was short for. <laughs> It's your man's Rod Carter. Man, I'm excited to be back with y'all. Y'all know what it is. Another episode of The Spotlight with Rod Carter. I got a boss here with me. He's a good friend of mine. Ladies and gentlemen, Brandon Lee Jackson. What's going on, bro? Chilling, bro. How are you, man? I'm doing well, man. I appreciate you coming on the show, man. Yes, sir. I appreciate you for having me, man. You have a beautiful home, man. You, I appreciate this, it. This man is living large. Please tell us how you got there, bro. I've been knowing you for like uh, 20 years now? Uh, let me see. It's right almost, after I got 40. married, mm-hmm. I got married in 02. Mm-hmm. So, well, no, you played at our wedding. So, yeah, yeah. at least 20 years. I forgot. Yeah. I, yeah. I forgot all about that. Yeah, you did. You played yeah, at the yeah, wedding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. What's up, man? Congratulations, bro. Yep. On the wedding? Yep. Yeah, yeah, 20 years ago. <laughs> <for that. laughs> but now, nah, man, you've done real well for yourself, man. Please tell uh, sure, man. my guests. Glory to God, man. Absolutely. Please tell my guests who don't know how you got to where you at. Tell them what you do, name of your business, all of that, where you're from. Uh, okay, uh, Brandon Jackson. I'm from right here in Wyandotte County, born and raised. Uh, both my parents are from. Well, my dad's from Louisiana, but uh, right here in Wyandotte County. Okay. Um, I'm a real estate investor. I'm a musician. Okay. Uh, I'm a God fearing man. Right. I'm a husband. I'm a father. Right. Uh, I'm a. I was about to say I'm a wife. <laughs> <laughs> That's another part <laughs> that I didn't know about. And, 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 and hey, bro, you know, I don't judge, but I don't, I don't really want to know about that part. Right, let me, yeah. yeah, yeah. Husband, father. Uh, does the uh, wife know? That, no, don't tell <laughs> Put that, edit that part out. <laughs> uh, a son, mm-hmm. uh, uncle, you know, just right. uh, a, a good friend, try to be. Right, absolutely. Um, entrepreneur, right. A mentor, encourager. Right. Um, you know, all the above. But as far as my profession, I'm a real estate investor. Okay. That's what's up. So tell us uh, how you got to that point. Like, why, first of all, why real estate? Um, well, when I was about 18, 19, right after high school, mm-hmm. uh, my family and I, we had this custom t-shirt company. Right, right. And um, I remember I would be looking at 
I think I'd be on the computer and see like infomercials about real estate and stuff, and also at home. I think uh, Carlton Sheets at the time was real big. Right, right, so, right, 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 right. You know, I right. see all that stuff, mm -hmm. and you know, just being able to take something that was ugly and hideous right. and make it something beautiful. Right. And then, of course, you know, the money that they were saying they were making was like, man, I, I don't see why I wouldn't be able to do that. It don't right. look hard. Right, you know? right. And uh, that's really what started the hmm. uh, the motion because I had heard that, you know, most successful people or well-off people, mm -hmm. you know, almost all of them, well, pretty much all of them have some form of real estate in their life. Hmm. So, you know, it just intrigued me to learn about it and get into it. And right. that's that's what, what sparked that that. Uh, Got it. Got it started for me. Right for real estate. Yeah. That's what's up. So, uh, most of us, man, business owners, uh, coming straight out of high school or whatnot, we we don't start out as business owners. Right. So you have that moment where uh, you're working your nine to five, mm -hmm. and you get to that point that this is not working for you. Like this is, you know, there's something bigger for you, or you're tired of doing it, or whatever. Can you walk us through that moment and how you made that transition into? Uh, becoming the business owner that you are, the real estate uh, investor that you are. Yep. So um, I'm a, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna give a, a quick synopsis. Absolutely. <laughs> From when I graduated high school, mm -hmm. my family uh, they had just bought a cleaners and this t-shirt shop. Okay. So right out of high school at like 18, mm -hmm. I graduated at 17. By the time I was 18, mm -hmm. I was running this t-shirt shop. I had no idea what I was doing. Right. Messed up all type of people's shirts. <laughs> Probably people that's going to see, but, hey, that's a dude that doesn't have shirt. You going to come after you? <laughs> right. <laughs> they going to be in the comments. <laughs> right. It's like, they ain't making my money back. <laughs> but man, it, it was such a big learning experience. And at the time, again, 18, mm -hmm. 19, mm -hmm. I have no idea what I'm about to do. Right. At this point, it's just, my mom and, you know, brother saying, hey, let's, you run this business and right. do this part, we'll do this part and whatever. Right. And uh, did that for a few years, wasn't really making any money, mm -hmm. uh, was with my future wife at the time. Mm -hmm. And it just got to a point to where, like, it just wasn't enough money to do, to live, you know. Right. And uh, I wanted to help my mom and, you know, build this business, but at the same time, I wanted to, you know, start being there for my family or my wife and, you know, start building something right. uh, financially. Right. Right. And that was like one of the hardest things too. You know, it's like, mm -hmm. mama, I love you. And, you know, but at the same time, I didn't have the knowledge and the wisdom in order to build a business correctly either. Right. At that time, I was just showing up, trying to do whatever I was supposed to do mm -hmm. <laughs> and not doing a good job at that. <laughs> uh, I wasn't showing up when I was supposed to. Well, <laughs> yeah, I forgot. You wasn't doing nothing, right? <laughs> I wasn't, but it was, it was right, crazy. Right. But anyway, uh, left there, started mm -hmm. selling cars for a little bit. Okay. I forgot about that, man. Yeah, yeah. I, I sold I cars for yeah. like two, two, three years, man. And yeah. in the beginning, it was cool. You right. know, I was making pretty good money. But right. after a while, it was like, man, this ain't me. Like, mm -hmm. you know, you got to go up here and talk to these guys in the front, the managers. And then they tell you, get back in there and you take all their money. That's basically <laughs> what they're saying. Like, dude, I can't. You know, I'm not right, that type of person right. in my heart. You right, know? right. But, you know, uh, the car selling business, it, it's cutthroat. At least back then, it was. I don't know what it is it now. It probably hasn't changed. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Things don't usually get better. Yeah, yeah. It, dude, it was so crazy. And then when you get the new people, like, that are brand new, you know, like, they got this new, they don't know, you right. know, stuff that right. I know now. Right. So, they all hype and right. trying to right. run into customers when right. they come. And I'm like, man. Right. <laughs> so, eventually, I got out of that. And, right. you know, uh, honestly, I went through, at the time, I didn't know it. Mm -hmm. I went through, like, this whole stage of depression and stuff and because mm -hmm. i wasn't working right uh and then I, I didn't know what i wanted to do at that time okay uh i did have like real estate books and all that mm -hmm. that i was kind of reading while i was there but mm -hmm. i never just dove all the way in i had you know each one of them had a bookmark that was on like page 15 page 30 right you know right like, all right. these books i never finished <laughs> right so anyway met this guy started doing a little bit of real estate stuff with him mm -hmm. and long story short it was a scam uh, Cause I thought that that right there, I was about twenty two, twenty three at the time, uh -huh. and I thought that you know that was it. It's like, man, this dude is doing real estate. I'm about to get in here, and right. he took me to places that were like down to the studs, places that were fixed up right. and rented out, and right. places that they were just about to buy and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And so uh, you know, I'm like, man, this is it. I'm about to you know right. start winning. Right. And long story short, ended up getting a foreclosure, messing with this dude. And, uh, 
You know, I learned a whole lot of what not to do. Right. Uh, and it, it would have been way worse, honestly, if it wasn't for my wife. You know, she was uh, she was the smart one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, she's like, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Don't, uh-uh. Don't, uh-uh. don't sign that. Uh-uh. uh-uh. Something that ain't making sense. I don't trust uh-uh. him. I'm like, babe, come babe. on, man. I don't trust him either, but, you know, I think I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> But, oh, that's for me, but, but, I'm I'm anyway. but thank God for my wife. Man. Absolutely, she, bro. Shout she, out to the wife. Yes, man. yeah, definitely. But you know, went through all that, and then I definitely after that was because mm-hmm. you know when you think that you on the way and something right. happens and it don't happen, man. I was like, I was, <laughs> I was at home like in my drawers all day, plenty of days. Like, man, what is going on? But you know, thank God, finally got a job at Parker and Gamble, mm-hmm. uh, Fortune five hundred company. Okay. Was making like twenty dollars an hour, most money I'd ever made at a job, right, right. Uh, and it really, you know, started the transition of changing my life. Mm-hmm. So, you know, buying bought my wife a vehicle, mm-hmm. uh, myself a truck. Uh, we, I think we had the house before. Yeah, we had the house before that. Oh, okay. But you know, uh, what started happening was started getting these bigger ideals mm-hmm. because now you know making this much money mm-hmm. and there was a bunch of surplus. You right, know? right. So it's like, man, we got this money. We got money, right? Yeah, what? Yeah, and I had already wanted to do real estate stuff. I just had did it with that dude, and, and that fell off. Right, and well, then I was like, okay, now is you know game time. Like really time to, you know, see what 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 am I capable of doing? Mm-hmm. You know, so uh, after working there for like three years. Mm-hmm. Everything was cool before that. Mm-hmm. After that, you know, I'd be at work. My wife would send me like a video or something right. on her phone, and I'm looking at her at our friend's house, and she's there having fun, mm-hmm. and you know, I'm enjoying it too. Like ah, uh, for that thirty seconds or whatever. Right. And then after it ends, I'm like, oh. Uh. <laughs> then I look at you know, <laughs> look at where it's, you at? It's right. soap going around and stuff, and I got to get up and fix the machine. Like man. <laughs> Well, they there having fun. I'm here right. doing this crap. Right. So, you know, that's where it kind of started being like, this is cool, but right. I want my time. Like, I want my right. my my freedom. You know? Right, right. So, uh, I was working with this guy named Brian. Mm-hmm. Uh, big shout out to Brian, Big B. Mm-hmm. And uh, we'd be at work on nights, mm-hmm. uh, rotating shifts. So, it was two weeks days, two weeks nights. Gotcha, gotcha. Nights were awesome days. So. Always. Yeah. Always. <laughs> <laughs> so, we'd be there working or I'm sorry. We would be at work. And <laughs> <laughs> we're there is a difference. <laughs> I'm present, but right, not right, here. Right. I was here, and when right. I was needed to do something right. that would continue to make the company money, I did that. But as long as it was running, <laughs> hey, I was just there. <laughs> Is Procter & Gamble still in business at this moment? Uh, actually, the plant was supposed to close. That was your fault. No, I was <laughs> I've been gone for three years. <laughs> I had been gone. Uh-uh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, okay, so so we'd be there, uh-huh. and Brian, he'd mm-hmm. be bringing these. Uh, big shout out to Brian, like I said. He's a nerd, like mm-hmm. big dude. He's, I don't know, probably... 300 pounds, if that, but wow. really big dude, right. six, whatever. Right. And, uh, but he'd bring these Dungeons and Dragons books to work and mm-hmm. be reading them and stuff, like right. all this stuff I would never read. Right. You know? right. But I would be on my phone. Because you're cool. Uh, I mean, I just <laughs> wasn't a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be on my phone, you know, playing like, I don't know, Words or Friends or something. That's pretty nerdy, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it is a nerdy guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I'll tell you, one nerd oh. to another. Right? <laughs> Dang, that wasn't a good game to say. Well, I was playing Words or Friends amongst other games. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, so, you know, I'll be playing games. He's over there reading. Mm-hmm. And then finally, it hit me like one night out the blue, like, eh. We sitting here at work. Mm-hmm. He's reading these books. Right. I got books at home that I started reading, mm-hmm. you know, right. uh, with real estate and business and all that that I just never finished because I went through that whole situation and right. you know whatever. It's like let me just start bringing that stuff to work, right. get paid, mm-hmm. educate myself, right. and maybe start to change my life. Right. So that's what I did. I started bringing those books to work. I started reading them. Right. Within like three, four months, I had read like eight books or wow. you know a whole bunch of like just knowledge and information i was just taking it all in man right 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 and uh then finally i got to a point to where it was this book i was reading 
by uh, this guy named Dean Graziosi, who's still relevant today. Okay. It said call around the local banks and, mm-hmm. you know, see if they have any foreclosures. Mm-hmm. This is 2012, to put it into perspective. Mm-hmm. So, or 2011. Mm-hmm. The crash was in 08 or 09, around there. Right. So, the market was still, like, trash, basically. Right. right. Uh, to put it into perspective, the I fast forwarding, I ended up buying this house for $6,700. Wow. They first told me 20 mm-hmm. uh after a little bit of negotiation, I got it for sixty seven hundred. Mm, wow! That same house uh, today, actually, we ended up selling it uh, twenty nineteen for what do we sell it for? Like sixty five thousand, something like that. And really? I, I think today, because of the market, is probably worth. Which I wish we kind of would have kept it now, right? <laughs> uh, but it's probably worth like ninety or something now. Oh, so 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 back up, back up, back mm-hmm. up, bro, back up. I'm because I'm, I'm sitting here in your house wondering how you can, how you can afford all this. <laughs> okay. Um, so you bought a house for sixty seven hundred. Correct. Okay. How much did you end up putting into it to fix it? Uh, total invested was about ten grand. Really? Yep. Ten. And grand. then you flipped it. Uh, what we did, we did this process. It's actually called. Uh, well, it has a specific term now. It's called the Burr strategy. Okay. Uh, Burr, which is B R R R, buy, mm-hmm. rehab, mm-hmm. rent, mm-hmm. refinance, oh, then repeat. So B R R R R. Okay. Oh, so it's pretty buy, dope. Yeah. Buy, rehab, <laughs> right. <laughs> buy, rehab, rent, refinance, repeat. Okay, so that's what we did. We fixed it up, got mm-hmm. somebody, a renter in there. Again, mm-hmm. all this I had never did before. I was completely uncomfortable through the whole thing, but wow. I was like, you know, this is my, my dream. God right. has put this in me for whatever reason. I'm going right. to get out here and do it. Right. Uh, I used, I had $7,000 just from saving money from working. Right. Had an investor that I went and talked to, told him I'd give him a 20% return mm-hmm. within six months or whenever the house was done. Mm-hmm. Uh, then I reached out to my cousin mm-hmm. and my wife's brothers. like, hey, Got this house. I don't know nothing about fixing on houses. Right. I did. I uh, let me see if I remember what I did at that house. I remember it was something on the front porch. I did like when I was putting the front porch up. Other than that, I didn't really didn't do anything. Do like, right, you know, right. cleaning stuff right, up and all right. that. You was a broom guy, right? Right. right. And, but <laughs> honestly, my whole philosophy with business mm-hmm. always, or with real estate, mm-hmm. was you always make more money using this than you will with this. Right. right. So you know, you can pay somebody to get in there and do right. this for right. ten dollars an hour. Right. But the the real money is really made when you go and network and talk to people and create right. these deals and, and find the house right. that you can get for, you know, pennies on the dollar. Right. Right. And then negotiating the price that it's going to cost to fix it up, right. you know. Right. So you're right. creating the money with this. Got you. Not right. necessarily, Not necessarily that. This, right. That's, that's, the, that's the easy part. Exactly. Gotcha. So, so uh, anyway, uh, it was about 10 grand to fix that up. Mm-hmm. And then as far as the burr process... Mm-hmm. I went back to that same bank that I actually purchased it from mm-hmm. for sixty seven hundred. It's like, hey, this house, uh, I don't know what it's worth right now, mm-hmm. but uh, can we get it appraised? And what banks do is they'll uh, give you a a loan mm-hmm. against the house. That's okay. what a refinance is. Okay. Normally, okay. an investment house they do like seventy five percent, seventy percent. Different banks have different ratios okay. of the ARV, which is after repair value. Mm-hmm. So when this house is done, it appraised at forty five thousand. Mm-hmm. Bought it for seven, put ten into it. I'm seventeen in. Praise for forty five thousand. Wow. So I got what's that twenty seven thousand equity or something like that. Mm-hmm. So what the bank did, they gave me a loan mm-hmm. of seventy five percent of forty five thousand, mm-hmm. which was thirty three thousand. Okay. And I had a payment of uh, three or four hundred dollars, something like that. Mm-hmm. So a month? yeah, a month. Oh. So what I did was I found somebody to rent it from me. And mm-hmm. they paid me six twenty five or six fifty a month. Right. So I'm cash flowing two fifty a month. Right. Keep in mind the bank gave me thirty three thousand. Right. So I got my seventeen back that I put into the house. Right. Plus I pocketed sixteen thousand. Right. So you know now I'm like man this stuff works. <laughs> right. 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 <laughs> and right. you know I, now please it was not easy. I went through all type of stuff. My cousin went MIA for like two months and okay. you know, it was it man, it, it was uh you know, I definitely went through that phase like why am I doing this? I just need to stick with this job. And, right. But at the same time you, I was you like, were still at the job 
no, still had to, okay. on my off days, I mm-hmm. would be there, like mm-hmm. going to Home Depot and do mm-hmm. whatever. I need. I wasn't working on the house because I don't know how to do anything. Right. Even to this day, like I know how to do a little bit more. Right. But I, I you don't. Still mostly don't do. Right. Yeah, I'm, I'm an investor. Right. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. So, uh, but yeah, house got done. Mm-hmm. Did all that. We cash flowing two fifty a month, seventeen mm-hmm. grand in pocket, sixteen grand in pocket mm-hmm. plus my initial investment. Paid right. my investor back his three thousand right. plus the twenty percent. Right. Hey, I'll let you know when I got another deal coming. Right, 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 <laughs> right, right. Uh, so, go on to the next house. Mm-hmm. And kind of the same thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, the bank, this other, I started working with this realtor. Mm-hmm. Bank had this house. This is another, another bank. Okay. And this landlord wasn't paying the mortgage, but the people were paying him rent. Okay. And the bank. Oh, so he was just pocketing the rent. Pocketing, right? Yeah, Ooh. crazy, man. Uh, so, the bank foreclosed they went to the house to change the locks and the people were like hey we still live here like what's going on we've been paying our rent like, right well he ain't been paying but they worked Ooh, it out it was crazy bro wow, bro yeah crazy but they worked it out with mm. the tenants to uh the tenants just paid the bank their 800 dollars a month oh okay and then it okay. was like hey whenever whoever buys this house we gotta yeah right. they'll have the option to come in here sure. and, and if they want to let you stay or right. if you gotta go right. that'll be between them and you right so uh I ended up buying that house using the same bank, mm-hmm. and I did a uh, what what they do is called a, a an investment loan. They'll give you seventy five percent of the price to buy the house, mm-hmm. and then you got to have fifteen per, uh, or twenty five percent. Okay. So it was originally sixty, but I think I ended up getting it for like forty eight or something. Okay. And so I needed you know sixteen grand or whatever. Right. Guess what. What? I got sixteen grand from that the bank just gave me, so I just used the bank's money. <laughs> my man, <laughs> used the bank's money as my down payment. Right, they gave me the rest to right. buy the house. Right, so now I got this house with this loan on it. Payment mm-hmm. was like four hundred, about the same. Man, bro. And then I went to them, and was like, "Hey guys, listen, I let y'all." And this house was a mess, bro. Mm-hmm. Uh, I let y'all stay, right. but you know you're gonna have to pay me. You could pay me what you were paying him, but mm-hmm. they had pets and stuff. And, right. you know, I didn't get a security deposit transfer from him or nothing. Right, so I'm like, right, I'll right. work with y'all, right. but I'm amortized your pet deposit and your... Okay, so what's amortized? Uh, amortization is when you take a... Well, to make it easy, if you take $1,200 and you amortize it over a year, which mm-hmm. is 12 months, mm-hmm. then that's $100 a month. Oh, okay. All right. Gotcha. Thank so you. Uh, we told them we'll have to amortize the security deposit and the pet deposit. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they didn't really want to do it because they're like, we paid it to the other dude. I'm like, hey, right. I'm sorry. He didn't give it to me. Right. I'm allowing y'all to stay here. Right. I need that. So that took their rent from 800 to like 947. Oh, so hey, they you know, couldn't have been happy. Uh, they wasn't too happy, but they wanted to stay there. But, <laughs> you know, like just being honest. Right. So, right. you know, I'm paying 400 a month. Right. And I'm getting 947 a month from them. So I'm making 540 on this house. Plus mm-hmm. I'm making two, three, four, five. Uh, like three hundred on the other house, mm-hmm. so I got right. a whole extra eight hundred dollars right. a month coming in. I'm doing nothing. I'm well. I'm still going to work at my job. You, this <laughs> doing nothing. <laughs> Not on nights when I on, on, still on, right, 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 on the days. Dude. <laughs> on the days you was working. Right, right, right. But you know, the picture started getting clear to me. Like, man, this does work. Right, right. and uh, pretty much from there, just you know, after a year, mm-hmm. they got out. Uh, well, they moved out. <laughs> <laughs> That's not more like a tick, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they they got out after a year. Right, right. Did a full rehab on that. Okay. And uh, we end up putting like, uh, I want to say like thirty thousand into that one. Mm-hmm. So to to rehab it. To rehab it, yeah. Oof. So bought for forty, put thirty into it. Um, as far as the the money to fix that one up, I think I got another uh, investor to put money in, and I was still working too. Mm-hmm. So you know the money I was making from the houses right, and all that, right. plus my work money, right. Putting that in there. Right. So uh, we're like 70 in total. Mm-hmm. And then we sold it. And I thought it would sell for like 90 or something. But right. my realtor was like, no, nah, we can sell it for whatever. I think it was like 110. I just remember but when everything was said and done, mm-hmm. we had got a check for $40,000. Uh, and it was like, man. I remember being at the closing <laughs> right. and looking at my wife was like, was it all worth it? So was this you believing in me and you right. know, going through the right. stuff with the dude and right. the foreclosure? Right. She's like. It was, it was, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, and then it just kept kind of going from there right, and, right. you know, fast forward to, you know, time and experience and learning mm-hmm. different techniques and strategies mm-hmm. and, and now we're, we're at, uh, I think 20, 
25 property 24 or 25 properties and that's you know that's, that's all we do so it's, it's really been a blessing man wow so you currently have 25 properties yep yep 25 now when i say have mm -hmm. uh we do different strategies so we do uh -huh. what's called a contract for deed mm -hmm. which is where a buyer mm -hmm. or we have a contract with a buyer mm -hmm. and when they fulfill their financial obligation or contract with us they'll receive the deed so in other words, we're just the bank. So right. we're not a landlord. They're not calling us about the toilets and all that stuff. Oh, okay. They just pay us every month. They pay the down payment, then mm -hmm. they pay us every month. If they default, we get the house back. But as long as they fulfill their contract, they get the deed to the house. They own it. They don't give us any more money. Uh, it's usually like 10, 15 year term, something like that. Uh, sometimes it could be longer depending on how much the house is worth, uh -huh. the location, stuff like that. Interesting. Uh, lease with option is where it's kind of similar to that, but it's where if they don't have enough for what we're asking down, mm -hmm. we kind of help them finance the mm -hmm. uh, a little bit every month that will go towards the rest of the down payment. Gotcha. And then after you know whatever two years, mm -hmm. then it'll will amortize. We'll create an amortization schedule for them to pay the house off. Uh, okay. uh, and then we also do regular rentals, which right. is you know just regular rental. And uh, well, and we do we have one house that we're doing a room rental in. So okay. we took a single family home. Mm -hmm. It was three bedrooms and mm -hmm. one bathroom. We added a bedroom. Okay. And then we just rent out each bedroom. Individual. So they share yep, that space. Well, they share the kitchen, the bathroom. Right. Stuff like that. We put a TV in there. Right. And, you know, right. all type of stuff like that. And that's going pretty good. That's what's up. But, uh, but yeah, all together, it's a total of 20, 20, I think it's 25 or something. We keep, we buy and sell. So right. it kind of, you know, right. fluctuates. Right. But yeah, man, bro, bro, that's what's up. Man. You 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 out here killing it, dog. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm proud I'm of you, to, man. Yeah. I, I want to ask a question uh, and touch on this just a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so, getting in this, how important is credit? Um, when I first got started a few years ago, I would have told you it's very important. Mm -hmm. What I know, or back, or how do people say it? Now that I know, yeah. or, right. or however the saying goes. Like, <laughs> Now that I know what I didn't know then, uh -huh. it's not important at all. Like, really? it's not. I've I've purchased, I don't have an exact number, but I've purchased 10 houses, mm -hmm. no money down, no credit check. Um, how is that? But how is that possible <laughs> with you getting all these loans and, and, and shifting money back and forth? So what people fail to realize is that just most of the time when you buy a house, it's not even your money that you're using to buy a house or not your credit mm -hmm. in the beginning that's what i thought too but once right. you know i started getting out there and meeting people that were doing things in different mm -hmm. ways and mm -hmm. more creative ways right you can buy a house <clears throat> without using any of your credit or money you use somebody else's credit and like say somebody has a house mm -hmm. and they've been there for a few years mm -hmm. And now, for whatever reason, life happens or whatever, they want to sell it. They don't want to make that payment anymore. Or they can't make the payment anymore. Right. You can go to that, that individual and say, hey, listen, I know you're in a situation. Mm -hmm. uh, and you don't want to have to worry about making this payment anymore. Mm -hmm. You can't sell it outright because of whatever. It needs too much work or, mm -hmm. you know, you'll be upside down and you would actually owe money on it. Right. We can just take over on these payments, make payments on your behalf. And uh, you sign the deed over to us. So we own it. You mm -hmm. still got this loan in place mm -hmm. that's in your name, right? But we're gonna make that payment, and right. you know, as long as someone agrees to that, mm -hmm. then you can buy that house with no money down wow. and no credit check because their credit. Because right. So right. in all actuality, if you become an expert at this strategy, mm -hmm. you could buy an infinite number of houses wow. because you're not using your own. You're not credit. using your own credit, right? right. So, uh, but yeah, we've. We so you can it. actually jack up somebody else's credit like that. You could, and that's the thing about this business like mm -hmm. and I've met people that have done that mm -hmm. and it messes it up for people like me that are actually honest and mm -hmm. you right. know doing people right because right. like I have people that I've done business with mm -hmm. where I did that with their house and mm -hmm. then after a few years I paid them off and mm -hmm. they're just so thankful and grateful because you know they didn't know what they were going to do in this situation right. they right. had this house right and whatever the situation was before right. they couldn't pay it anymore or didn't want to pay it right and I step in, hey, we'll make these payments for you. Right. We make the payments for a few years, mm -hmm. and which is actually helping their credit. Right, right. Uh, we make the payment for a few years, then it's paid off, mm -hmm. and now that whole credit obligation and debt is gone off their credit. Wow. So, but uh, wow. one problem or one big question we get asked a lot 
is what if I want to buy another house or get something, you know, mm -hmm. a car or something? Because mm -hmm. people think about their debt to income and stuff like that. Right. But as long as we can prove that they're not making that payment and mm -hmm. we are, mm -hmm. which we would do with our bank statements and all oh, okay. that, right. then it ex well, depending on the lender, you mm -hmm. know, it will excuse them from calculating that out of their debt to income. Interesting. Yep. So, so, so all of this was in these books that was sitting, um, or you've learned a lot of it? Well, it's funny, man, because a lot of it was in the books, mm -hmm. but I didn't understand it because... You didn't the, have it in practice. Yeah, and I met, so in 2014, I met this guy, mm -hmm. and he's the one that really explained mm -hmm. to me that strategy that I just told you, because mm -hmm. before that, I was doing it traditionally. I was like, oh, man, I got to keep my credit good. Right. I got to do this and that, right. or whatever. Right. Met him, and he just changed the whole game for me. Like, when I met him, I had did five houses. Okay. Uh, after meeting him mm -hmm. and the knowledge and wisdom that he gave me, it was hours of talking and conversation and, and mm -hmm. dialect. But that first year, I think I did like seven or eight houses. Wow. Then the next year, it was about the same. Wow. And, you know, so, I mean, he really just took me on another level. But mm -hmm. the difference was, like, you know, reading the book, you just read it and hopefully you can comprehend it. You know, right. some people are, are very skilled and knowledgeable and they can read something and just get Pick it. Pick it up. You know, got it. Right. Or kind of like, you know, you being a musician. Right. Some people can read sheet music and just, right. Uh, right. me, I'm like, uh, uh, let, me, let me listen to what the sound like. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> right, That's me, right, you know. Right. But uh, I, I just that level of comprehension with that I didn't have. But mm -hmm. with him, you know, he explained it to me, and we going back and forth. And I'm like, oh, okay, so da da da, da. yeah, da, da. you know, just right, that right. going back and forth just made it click for me. And then right. whenever I had an issue or didn't understand something, mm -hmm. I call him. He explained it to me, and you know, he just really helped educate me and mentor me to where I am now That's and then I just started understanding more you know anytime you start doing something on your right, own right. it just starts clicking and you start I wonder if you mm -hmm. know right so yeah once that happened that's where I started like really just taking off but right. it was really that strategy and him mm -hmm. that helped me to really take it to another level and realize that there is more than uh, one way to skin a cat right 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 that's mm -hmm. what's up man um, one of the big things about this show, man, is trying to, um, help people that want to become business owners in whatever field, mm -hmm. uh, trying to encourage people, inspire people, uh, to get them to take that leap. Tell, answer this question for me. How did you overcome the fear of failure, which I believe is common in all of us, right. uh, somewhere? How did you get past that or was it just you really got sick of working at your job I mean because I, even now I'm sure you know on the level that you're at there's got to be some sense of fear somewhere yeah. um, then again I don't know but don't let me no, fear in you uh, how did you keep moving forward when you got those obstacles you know that was like oh man I messed up or you know whatever the case might be how did right. you push past that and keep moving um, so <clears throat> my wife and I uh Back in 2014, I've been wanting to leave my job for. I started in 08. Mm -hmm. By 2012, I was sick of it. I was done. I was ready to go. Right. Uh, you like soap no more? No, I hated it. <laughs> <laughs> Coming home, smelling like soap. And, and, That's a good thing, man. Uh, you, you nah, when, like when you dealing with soap all day, it ain't a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> no. But uh, like, I was really ready to quit. Mm -hmm. And uh, what ended up happening, my wife and I, we adopted our nieces. Okay. And we adopted our, we went through like that whole process. So you got to have W-2 income right. and all this stuff. So, right. and I was so mad because I was ready to quit. But mm -hmm. I was like, man, now I got to stay yeah. here and, <laughs> right. you know, do this. Right. And so right. I'd sacrificed for like a good two years of staying at that job. Mm -hmm. And I had an aunt down in Louisiana. Mm -hmm. Rest in peace, Uncle Routine. Mm. And I would always show her like my pictures of my houses and stuff. Mm -hmm. and, you know, like she was always so proud of me when right. I, and she passed away okay. in 2014, okay. February 11th. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was at work when I got the message. And, mm -hmm. you know, like I broke down and everything, man. Right. And, uh, I left early, went to my dad's house and all mm -hmm. this stuff. And that I, I, I went back to work one time mm -hmm. after that. Mm -hmm. And then I never went back again. Really? Yep. And uh, what happened was I just realized, like, how short life was, you know, like I right. was spending all this time doing something I didn't care about doing. I was right. a slave to the paycheck. Right. That's exactly what I was. Right. And God had already shown me a glimpse of what was possible mm -hmm. part time. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. 
So to me, it just made sense. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Uh -huh. So that's what I did. I just was like, you know what? She's not here. She don't have no more time. Mm -hmm. I still have time. Right. And I'm sick of wasting it. Why not do what God put in me to do? And right. He gave me this vision and dream and goal. Right. So I went all in after that. And uh, but really, it was my aunt passing mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Gave me that extra push I needed, right. you know, to just be like, you know what, man? And, and this other guy I talked to that was a business owner, mm -hmm. he was like, Brandon, you got to realize as long as you got that job, you're never going to go all in on this because you right. know that you have you something, know you to, have fall something to fall back on. on. Right, yep. right, He's right. like, I guarantee you, man, you'll never get to that point. And it's not, I don't agree with that for everybody. Some people can you know, do it. But for me, mm -hmm. I definitely had that mindset of like, right. man, this don't work, you know. And oh, that's, that's safety now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, doing that when I left mm -hmm. uh, and my aunt passing, it helped me. To, it, it gave me what I needed. It's right. different for everybody. Right. It's completely different for everybody. Right. But that's what I needed. That's what you needed. Yeah. Right, right. That's what's up, man. Brandon, this has been an amazing interview, man. My head is so full of knowledge, I feel like it's getting ready to bust. <laughs> Please but... don't, don't get it on my couch. <laughs> <No, man. laughs> Hey, well, nigga, we want to get a little something, man. We can't even take a little brain matter on the calendar. <laughs> if you need to, let's cook. <laughs> um, I, listening to your story, man, it's amazing. Um, and sometimes I have a, a tendency to listen to these stories of, uh, of CEOs who have, you know, come from, built something from nothing. And that, to me, is amazing. The... Uh, problem that some of us have is uh, being naive enough to believe that everything was just great. Please tell me other people that might be looking into going into this business. What is the downfalls of being a real estate investor? Uh, well, like I stated before, you know, mm -hmm. I did that stuff with the dude in the beginning, right? And I thought that that was it, right? And it wasn't. I got a foreclosure on my credit. My credit was jacked up for a minute, right. and I was very huge on having good credit. Right, so, right, right. Um, you know, just trusting the wrong people in the business and, right. you know, which is hard to, to discern. You mm -hmm. know, it really is. And that's why I pray for the spirit of discernment, but uh, God didn't give it to me yet. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> the package is delivering slow. Right, right, right. That's why I, my, well, actually he did give he it did. to me. Your it's wife. My wife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. He just don't be listening <laughs> I'm still working on it, man. I'm still. I've been listening more though. That's though, good. And man. she's really helped a lot. That's man. So, up, man. Shout out to the wife. Yeah, man. Definitely, definitely. Um, but um, yeah. It. One of the big things I could definitely say is, you do have to believe mm -hmm. in yourself. Like mm -hmm. you got to have faith that God didn't give you this dream and this vision mm -hmm. for no reason. Like it, it was given to you for a reason. Right. But it, it's up to you to see it through hmm. because right. it's going to be obstacles and things that come up that, right. you know, right. you could eat. It, it's so much easier to just say, you know what, forget it. I'm going to just go back to, you know, playing music right. instead of, you and know. And you got a little music. Uh, well. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I do, man. <laughs> but, but see, that was my point. It's, it's easy. You know, you say, right. I go back to playing music instead of doing videography. Right, right, right. Whatever. I got you. you know. I got you. Right. So, um, doing, doing what you're comfortable. Exactly. Doing. Right, right. And, and that's that's the whole thing, man. Mm -hmm. Like, you have to, life is about, our, our, our growth in life is about being uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. If you if you're in a situation right now where you're completely comfortable, mm -hmm. you're not growing. Like that that's just Ooh. is what it is. Ooh. Like say that real. again. Say say that say that to the people. If you're in a situation where you're comfortable in life, you are not growing. Mm -hmm. Like I mean, it's it doesn't get any easier right. than that. Like right. or any plainer, any simpler than that. Right. right. And and I I at times in my life I've been in places where I was comfortable, mm -hmm. but you know, like you say said earlier and stated mm -hmm. earlier. Like, I just start getting that feeling like, man, I know I'm too comfortable. Like, even though things are good, you know, right. everything, but right. I, I know that God put more in me right. than that. And I know that I need to get out of my comfort zone so I can right. continue to, to grow. Continue to grow, right? Yeah, it's like, it's almost like uh, that somebody once said that um, um, if you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. You switch rooms. Yeah. yeah. Because you're not, anything that's not, Growing is dead. Exactly. And so, if you like, like you said, if you're not, if you're comfortable, yep. Then you, you, I think eventually you become stagnant. Yeah. And then you just, you just stop growing. That's, yeah. I yeah. Get it. And and I love, I love being uncomfortable, but I hate it too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. Like, it's kind of like you know, some people, 
love working out. Mm-hmm. You know, I hate working out, <laughs> but I know that you know I need to do it in order right. to achieve what right. you know I want to achieve. So, right. Right. but yeah, being uncomfortable, man. Like you just have to get okay with being uncomfortable because right. that is the only time that you are getting challenged. Mm-hmm. And when you're getting challenged, that means that you have to go above where you're currently gotcha. at right. in order to. You know. Achieve the next level. Exactly, that's, exactly. That's what's up, bro. So, so yeah, definitely get out your comfort zone uh, and just, just do it, man. Mm-hmm. Like, just you know, like uh, a, a philosophy that I use a lot is mm-hmm. most people do ready, aim, fire, mm-hmm. and I do that a little bit, <laughs> but I'm more ready, fire, aim. Wow. So, uh, and it works out. You know, explain you, that though. I mean, it sounds like shoot first, ask questions later. I mean, you know. (laughs) So, ready, fire, aim is, you know, I I get enough information Mm -hmm. to where I feel like I can make a well-informed decision. Okay. But I know there's still some things that may not be like all the way tightened up. Right, right. But I'm willing to deal with whatever that consequence is. Gotcha. Because I know, I've done enough research or whatever to know that it won't be something that's going to be like, career ending or right, right. whatever. And I feel like what a, the opposite of that is analysis paralysis. Okay. Which is where people are just trying to learn everything Analyze about it. So much, it. right. Yeah, right. and then they haven't taken any action because they're trying to know everything about it, which really That's you don't... Me. That's yeah. me. That's me. Yeah, you yeah. have to... Yeah. You do have to get out, like, experience... There's no other teacher like experience, man. Right. Like, you can have a mentor and all that. Mm-hmm. And mentors do help mm-hmm. prevent you from, you know, bumping your head on certain things if you listen. Right. But, you know, the experience, man, is just there's nothing else like it. You got to get out there, get your feet wet, bump your head a few times, right. and, like, just do it. Right. Like, nobody became – Kobe Bryant didn't become Kobe Bryant with – well, he was a very talented man when right. he was younger. But, right, right, you know, right. like, he still went through – like, he put he – anybody work. tell you he put in hours and hours and hours at right. the gym, like, stuff that we didn't see. Right. We just saw the greatness, right. you know. On that TV, he, right? That he displayed, right? Exactly. Right. But it took it took the work. Yeah. So same thing, man. Like just believe in yourself. Get out there, do it. Get out your comfort zone. Talk to people. Try to get around others that are doing what you do, mm-hmm. which can be challenging because a lot of people like they, you know, we as a people look at stuff as competition so much, right? Man. Right. And it's not. We stand you with information. We are, man. Yeah. And it's it's like when it comes to real estate. Mm-hmm. If you think about it, if you go outside, you go outside and you look around your area just in the middle of the street you can count at least 15 to 30 houses i've done it in different neighborhoods and that's what you see mm-hmm. so if you think about that small area that you're in that one zip code that you're in that one subdivision that you're in there are thousands of others just in your city that you're in mm-hmm. so it's enough houses out there right. for anybody, anybody to get into real estate right but it's just some people that you know they're they just don't, the less competition, the better. Right. But, you know, to me, like, there there really, honestly, is enough out here for everybody. It's always somebody that, you know, and these bad things happen in life, but it's always divorces happen. Mm-hmm. It's always parents dying and leaving houses to kids. Mm-hmm. It's always people relocating for jobs. Right. Uh, it's always uh, numerous things that will lead to somebody needing to, to sell a house. Needing to sell a house. Know? That's what's up. Yeah, people losing their job. Right. You know, like, right. and... Right. One man. So it sounds like you benefit on everyone else's misfortune. <laughs> that's what. That's what. It's... Well, unless they relocate for a job. Okay. Okay. Right. <laughs> no, no, joking. But but usually it it becomes, you know, our our job or my job as an investor, mm-hmm. I want to make a win win situation mm-hmm. or win 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 situation actually because okay. whoever has this house that they need to sell, mm-hmm. I want to help them solve this problem with this house that they have and maybe they can't afford it anymore or right. whatever it is they need the problem going they need Bank of America to stop calling them. Right. I can solve that problem for them. The you, win for me. You, you go and blow up Bank of America? No, no, no. Uh, I, I just pay Bank of America. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Be clear on that. Right, right. Yeah. No, no. I just pay them so they leave them alone. Okay, I got you. The win for me is that I get a property where I'm able to create some equity or, gotcha. you know, profit. Right. 
And then the win for the other person is who I sell the property to or rent it to or whatever to where they're either able to start living the American dream because I'm financing them to buy a house and they don't have to go to a Bank of America right. to jump through all this red tape. Right, right, right. Or, you know, somebody's just looking for a place to rent mm -hmm. or, you know, whatever. So I'm all about win, win, win situations. It's right. just sometimes there are bad things that happen right. to people, right. but still... When I come in, I'm helping make that bad situation a good situation for them to where now they're not... Like so many deals I've done, it hasn't been about money. It's been about peace of mind. Oh, wow. Right. You know, because right. money is not everything. Some people just want the peace of mind to not right. have to worry yeah, about this thing. About, right. And that's right. why they'll be like, look... And that's more valuable. Than yeah, yeah. I don't even want any money. I'm not looking to make money. Mm -hmm. I just... I need to I be need done to with this. Right. Yeah. right. That's what's up. It's motivated sellers. That's... If you find motivation mm -hmm. or a distress situation... Right then you can make a deal easily. You just got to know, you got to know what to listen for. Mm -hmm. And you got to know, like, it, it's certain clues that people tell you. Right. And you just got to be able to hear it and then expound and pounce on it. Yeah. You know? <laughs> no, not, that don't sound right. Sound like a predator. <laughs> right. <laughs> but no, really, it's just listening to what they say and being able to solve their problem. Got you, got you. Man, I want to, uh, right before we close, and I, there was something that I saw on, your uh, Instagram or Facebook. It was one of them. I'm following on both of them. Mm -hmm. But I saw that you had gotten into a, 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 a bad deal with a, um, a contractor. A mm -hmm. contractor had... had to t tell me tell me more about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so <laughs> this contractor, uh, I, I did a deal with a friend. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had this contractor, this guy I used to work with, actually, okay. at P&G. Okay. And is this Brian again? No, this is no, not. No, no okay. Brian is the bomb. Okay, yeah, okay, okay, dude, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. So uh, reached out to him. Mm -hmm. He was supposed to help us, you know, like fix the property up. Mm -hmm. And long story short, what he did was the my my partner. He was the money guy. Okay. And I was the one with the experience. So it's supposed to be me as the middleman, mm -hmm. the contractor guy, and then my friend who was the financial guy. Okay. What the contractor did was he found a way to get me out the way. Okay. And then he was just communicating with the money guy. Okay. So he's getting money from him. Uh-huh. Instead of me being involved in knowing what's going on. Right, right. And, you know, by the time I started asking the questions that I should have been asking, mm -hmm. you know, and, and and being more proactive. Right. He had like $12,000 and I think the only thing done at the house was like insulation put up in the walls or something. So, you know, it was a bad deal, man. And I, I really just, one of my downfalls is trusting people, you right. know, but right. it's hard for me to not do that because right. I always look for the best in people. Right. And I feel like as a Christian, that's what right. you're supposed to do. Right. But uh, that's why I've been asking God to give me the spirit of discernment, man. And, 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 and again, he gave it to you. You just got to listen to yeah, it. Yeah, because she, yeah, dang it. She did say it. Right <laughs> she was right <laughs> again. Oh, dang it. Yeah. I just need to let her do everything. Yeah, man. just, you know, like her right. CEO, you right. know, you, 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 you Sweep the floors. Like, yeah. baby, tell me what you need. Right, right, right. You be the wife. Yeah. <laughs> right. But, but I, honestly, man, it's been, I, I couldn't tell you, like, I, it, it's thousands of dollars on bad deals that I've made. And really? Yeah. You just, it, you, it just looking at everything that you've achieved, you know what I'm saying? Like, like I was saying earlier, it looks like, it looks glamorous. You know, it looks, it, you know, I just look at it as it's part of, the business, you mm -hmm. know, like you're not going to always make the right decision, Okay. you know, right. and I mean, I've made some really bad decisions, but mm -hmm. I've made some really good decisions too, mm -hmm. but you know, it's just, you know, thankfully the good outweigh the bad. Right. right. And I, all I do is I try to learn from those bad decisions that I've made right. and then try to make better decisions. Gotcha. But yeah, I've, 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 yeah, I've lost thousands of dollars and made bad decisions and, yeah. you know, people... Probably are like, yeah, I got over on that dude, you know. Right, but right. I just look at, you know, I, I know that God is gonna provide, and, right, right. and you know, everything what they did, and you know, it'll come back to them. Mm -hmm. And you know, I try to retaliate with some stuff, but mm -hmm. you know, professional scam artists, they're really good. You know, they right. they know how to go from here to there and right. there and avoid getting right. served or whatever. Right. So right. you know, after a while, you just be like, you know what? Okay, it is what it is. Let me stop spending my energy on this right, right. and spend right. my energy Focus on. on yeah, just Rebound. getting yeah new right. deals, and so that's what it is. That's what's up, bro. You you've done it well. You've done yeah, it well. It, been proud of you, man. Um, I didn't I didn't do it alone. Right. I, I did not do it alone. Absolutely. Definitely, right. absolutely. Shout out to the wife, bro. Shout out yeah. to God too. To, to the wife, to God, man, family, family friends, right. my mama. Like it's plenty of people that have been there, you know, for me throughout this whole process that I can lean on and talk to. Right. 
And, uh, you know, it, it's definitely not by myself. That's what's up, man. Um, so what do you see for the future, you know, for, for the company? Um, we kind of been going back and forth on that, man. I really like the room rental thing. Mm-hmm. So, uh, cause it's cool to, you know, you almost double your right. cash flow from that. Right. Right. Uh, you do have more problems because you're kind of making a single family home, a apartment or right. an apartment right. because you got all these different people that have to right. live right. together. So I've, I've had, <laughs> I've had some phone calls. They were just like, okay, no, you can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, listen, man. If, if somebody don't want you in their space, you can't get you in can't their get space. Yeah. So, you know. Man, that's not like me talking to my kids. Exactly. Bro. I was like, look, I'll if you can't get out of his face, guy out of his face. I'll, you know I'll deal with that. I'll be right. like, okay, what? I, I don't know what you want me to do. You have to talk to them right. and tell them that. And I don't, you want me to call them and tell them not to do that? Like, I don't know what you want me to do. Yeah, man, you got a referee. Do. But, you know, and I could get like a property management company and have them do that. But oh, okay, right. eventually I probably will. But mm-hmm. uh, but anyway, uh, I like that strategy. So I probably do more of that. Okay. Commercial, uh, we do got a couple of deals right now that we're looking at some commercial stuff and okay. probably get more into that. Okay. It's just an uncomfortable feel for me. Right, right, <laughs> you know? right, right. So, uh, but I got to get uncomfortable in order to continue right, to grow. Right, right. absolutely. Uh, and, you know, just more residential stuff and you know uh other business stuff probably eventually I, i'm just not sure yet like mm-hmm. i really with real estate i love the time that i have mm-hmm. because once i get a house and once i get it occupied and cash flowing that's really my employee the house is my employee gotcha so you know they're the ones that make me money right so right. i don't have to you know keep going to this and right. uh, house and you know do right. all this with the contract for deed stuff like it's just you know, oh, right, cash right, flowing. Right. So I, I really like the time that I have, but you know, I know if if God is calling me to something else where I need to do some other business or mm-hmm. whatever, then right. I will have to dedicate time to that. But I'm not there yet. Gotcha. Right. So, right. but uh, yeah, commercial and you know, trying to do some training and stuff. I mm-hmm. try to do a little bit of that, like mentoring other people. Okay. And, right. you know, stuff like that. That's so, what's up, bro. I love teaching, man. I love sharing knowledge. Man, you seem like you got a wealth of knowledge. I've learned so much, man. I, uh, I look forward to even greater things for your company, man, and, uh, and everything you're pursuing, your family. Blessings to y'all, man. Appreciate it, man. Do me a favor and tell them where they can get in contact with you. Anybody looking for mentorship or uh, looking to sell a home or anything like that, yeah, all, all your socials do all that. Okay, okay, bet. Um, so uh, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Snapchat are all my personal is B jacking them up. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not laughing. Yeah, it's, it's a joke. I'm not yeah. laughing. I'm not laughing. <laughs> I always tell people what these dudes say. Uh, when I, I, I was talking to Bruce about that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't think that was still it, man. I thought, I thought it was enough. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. Uh, okay, we're good. Yep, I'm, I'm still, I still be jacking the right. <laughs> Oh, man. Okay. Okay. Okay, my bad. Okay. Uh, I oh. forgot you were the one that had said that. For the first time, uh, uh, oh, man. yep, I tell everybody that. Oh, <laughs> Hilarious. Oh yeah. man, go ahead, bro. All right, uh, so okay, uh, Facebook, Twitter, mm-hmm. Snapchat, Instagram are all be jacking them up. Uh, Venmo is also be jacking them up <laughs> and Cash App. Uh, that's B J A C K. Can like hear your voice when you said it. be jacking them up and down. <laughs> oh, oh, sure. oh man, that's uh, okay. I'm sorry, leaving, I'm leaving out this hand, bro. Oh, wow, all right, yeah, yeah, all right. all right, here we go. You might need to change that. <laughs>
Dude, I love it. <laughs> Lord, it used to be B Jack off. Or B Jack him off. But no, that was Brandon Jackson's office, though. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> So I can reach the uh I can be reached on all social media platforms under B Jacking Them Up. That's B J A C K I N E M U P. B Jacking Them Up. Uh as far as like real estate uh information, we give like tips and stuff like that. Kind of been slacking a little bit on that. But uh YouTube channel is Jackson R E I. That's J-A-C-K-S-O-N. I think it's a space, R-E-I. It may not be a space. And uh, that's also on Instagram, Jackson underscore R-E-I. And uh, my family and I, my wife and our three kids, we also have a, a family YouTube channel. <clears throat> and it's called Tequila and Nim. My wife's name is Tequila. Uh, T-E-K-E-L-A and Nim, N-E-M. So uh, you can follow me, find me <clears throat> on any of those platforms, reach out. I'd be glad to... Answer any questions, you know, about business or anything like, you know, like I said, I'm 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 here to help however I can in whatever way I can. So please reach out. That's what's up. Bro, I appreciate you, man. Yeah, man. You've done an excellent job um, uh, representing our show. Guys, uh, if you need anything, you heard the socials, please get at him. Uh, real estate uh, investor. Uh, if you need advice on that business, please do reach out to him. You, you support this uh, black entrepreneur, he's doing well in the game. Uh, also, support this channel, please. Um, if you like the content that you've seen, please uh, like, subscribe, share the information. Um, yeah, do that because you're not going to find me on a stripper pole. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be back with y'all another time with another uh, black entrepreneur. I appreciate you, bro. I, and I do want to say, bro, like, I'm. I, I see what you're doing, man. You out here doing it and, and getting out of your comfort zone. Yeah, man. And that, yeah. that's what it's about, man. Like, the growth is there. You know, there's you got those uh, stumbling stones or yeah. learning yeah. curves and yeah. all that. And that's what it takes, man. Yeah. So, yeah. if I could tell you anything, I would just say stay encouraged, be encouraged. Appreciate it, bro. And just keep growing. Anytime you make a mistake, right. put something in place to prevent that mistake from happening. So you can just keep making new mistakes. Because right. <laughs> that's all it's going to be. I said it's about us. I'll see you, bro. Appreciate Keep it up, man. Spot like you know, I like you, man. I'm motivated, I'm coming up. I'm motivated, I'm coming up. I'm motivated, I'm coming up. Get motivated to come on up. I'm motivated, I'm coming up. I'm motivated, I'm coming up. I'm motivated, I'm coming up. Get motivated and come on up.